You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Early signing period is tomorrow. Uh, I, I wanted to just get a, a, a take from you on on how this is all transpiring because it has made things and roster management very difficult on coaches. But generally speaking, it seems to be a good thing for the student athlete to give them more options. Do you fall one way or another with the two signing periods? I've changed over the. Well, I, I get the, the early signing period. I don't know. You know, Matt, I wish that we could find a way to not allow coaches to leave on their teams early but still have everybody in one big heap so you could go after a frenzy, kind of like when midnight hits and then, you know, in free agency for football or, or mm -hmm. NBA. or You know what I'm saying? Where it, like, hits and then so, – so coaches stay with their teams, and then if you don't want them or if you fire, they, they can't bolt on your team. But also a way that the player um, – they, they kind of work hand in hand. I don't know how that day will ever work because if you give the player early signing period, but you keep keep a coach around that's not going to be around because he sticks around before he leaves and go gets another job, he kind of screws everything up. I don't have a problem with it. If some guys want to get it out of the way and get an opportunity, it doesn't bother me one bit. I also don't – I've changed on how I felt about kids sitting out of bowl games and the rest of it. I used to be adamant, like, how would you go all these years and then – quit on your team but I don't know if it's quitting and you know it used to be that old school do it I I love what Matt Corral mm. decided to do stick around and play for his team at Ole Miss when he's going to be a probable first round draft pick and say they were with me he has his philosophy and then there's some that say you know what I'm not going to do it I'm not going to risk being on a six and six team where the bowl game isn't for a championship it's not a you know a, a January one bowl game or New Year's six and I'm just not going to do it. I get that, too, because we've seen what happened to guys like Jalen Smith and guys that get hurt um, in those types of games. So I don't have a problem either way. And for me, it was one signing date when I was coming out. I can remember it was February 8th, I believe, when I was coming out. This doesn't bother me. It gives you a frenzy get out in front of it, gets the kids you know, settled in before the holidays and bowl games kick in. So uh, the more options for the kids, the better. I, I don't know if it's all good for college football coaches and players-wise, but I'm okay with it. I'm curious what, what's changed your opinion. Um, just the way everything was always set up for, and I did now, if it was me, I'll tell you if it was me, Matt. Now, maybe it would be different if I was on the field because I shredded my knee twice during a season. And I'm thinking, okay, Sean, if you hadn't shredded your knee, if you did it once, and on Mel Kuypers, I was supposed to be a first-round pick, and after two shredded knees, I, I wasn't a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, after one in rehab and you're still supposed to be a high pick, would you have, if you were playing in the Aloha Bowl or in a bowl game uh, pre-January 1, would you have bailed out? That was the, You didn't have that option back then. Now I'm trying to put myself in their shoes as a top recruit and going to be a top draft pick. What would you do? I personally, knowing my family's DNA and how we were, I would take the risk, oh, I'm not going to get hurt, it's going to be okay, and I'd want my last game to be with my teammates. And if it was January 1, there'd be no option. That, and if you're in the finals, there is no option. I'd be playing. But what's changed is that every single thing, coaches can be there and bolt whenever they want and get rewards by leaving kids hanging. When I was coming out, if you transferred out of conference, had to sit out a year. If you transferred in conference, had to sit out two years. Mm. I'm not sure, like I said, all this is good for a college football landscape, but the kids always got hosed. Well, I can leave you hanging and go get $5 million bucks. you got to stay here. Well, I, I, I don't think it's right. So, I do, and I do fluctuate, Matt, I do, but I'm not firm on how could that guy not go play it in, in El Paso in the Sun Bowl? Yeah. Well, a 6-6 six and six team, no, no offense, get, maybe get a guy, if you're a guy, give him some work if the 6-6 six and six team. I, I, I think it's different now because of the impact of the bowl game. Be half full in the stands, you're risking what could be millions and millions of dollars. I get it. I, but I also lean to, man, I want that fraternity one more time with my guys. But there would be no option January 1st and beyond if you're in the Final Four for me or December 31st now for that. But I do get well, the kids, and that's why I've changed because things change. Uh, every, I mean, scholarships change. The way, and, and things change. And if you're not willing to evolve as a coach, as a teacher, as a worker in our business, then you get left behind. It doesn't mean I still don't have feelings about both, but I have changed to be such hard line. How could the kid do it? Well, you're on a 6-6 six and six team, not going anywhere. The coach got fired, and a kid is going to be a first-round pick. I understand. 
yeah. you don't want to play in the Sun Bowl. But uh, if, Matt, if, if somebody playing in the Final Four opted out when you've got a chance at a national championship, I, I would have a problem. Just I, I would. I would be, it would bother me because especially a quarterback or a star player, you, this is what you went to school for, aside from playing pros, is to have this opportunity. But I do get it, and I think the kid's finally not getting hosed because the coaches always got rewarded for Bolt Lane when he left Tennessee. I mean, those things happen. And now the kid gets to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to do what's best for me, too, not just what's best for you. But you do have to keep the team in mind, and I always believe that. I agree with you. And couldn't I argue that's an, that, that is an argument for an expanded playoff? Because if you Agreed. had more teams in the playoff, more guys more would be competing play. for a championship. They that, wouldn't be that, playing that. in a, like you said, a Sun Bowl in front of 15,000 people. Right. And how am I supposed to look at a great player and say you're 6-6, six and six, it's been an average season, your coach got fired. I'm just talking about any team. That Look at LSU. You're, you're talking about LSU in, right. indirectly, but you are. The coach got fired. They're 6-6. Six and six. Why should Demone Clark right. play in the Texas Bowl? Right. So, well, it's fine and dandy. That's a chance for me as a coach, even if he says he doesn't want it, to say, you know what? Let me get this kid who's been the backup tight end. Let's get him some work. It's a good chance. We're not going anywhere else. We're not getting rewarded. The same amount. Of, I mean, we're getting the money in the bowl game. There's no chance to go on and play in another one in the final four. That's exactly right. You want to keep kids around and playing with their teams and doing what Matt Corral is doing this year, give them a chance by expanding the playoffs. And then they won't bolt. The majority of them that are going to be there will want a chance to put that ring on their finger because those are hard to come by. Hey, Sean Salisbury on Twitter, at Sean Unfiltered. Um, There is kind of a weird brewing situation at LSU right now. I don't expect that you've kept up with this because it's sort of – Well, if it's the Nussmeier thing I have, oh, you bet. So so Nussmeier has chosen to take his red shirt. Yep. He can't play in another game. Well, Max Johnson and Miles Brennan have entered the transfer portal, meaning Nussmeier's the only scholarship quarterback. Sean, if Nussmeier plays in the bowl game, he burns his red shirt. They're they're trying to apply for a waiver. If he chooses to sit out, they're down to the option of a walk on in Matt O'Dowd or John Trey Kirkland, who's right. a receiver who played high school quarterback. What do you do? You play O'Dowd if he doesn't get the the if they don't allow him to play a fifth game, because I know it's four games, I believe, still, right. if I'm it not is, mistaken yeah. on it, and Nuss has played in four games. You know what? L- listen, if this, was, if this was a playoff, which it's not, and, you know, Coach wouldn't be fired at that point, but he might have left, right? Mm-hmm. Who, who knows? In this day and age, I, I, then it's a different story. They're 6-6. Six and six. While it'd be fun for Nussmeyer to play in the Texas Bowl, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be fine. Listen, you're going to have a new coach. Your system's going to change. You're going to retain some coaches you're going on. Nussmeyer's going to be the, the, the most ready guy come spring practice. This game ain't helping, I mean, maybe for confidence, but there's so much time. Get yourself ready for spring ball. Now, if they tell you you can go play, hell yeah, you go play. You want to get some, some snaps in. Brian Kelly's going to be watching, say, you know, I'm impressed. But this isn't changing the course of the LSU. This is not changing the course of Garrett Nussmeyer's career. It's just not. So if they don't get the waiver, you play O'Dowd. Give the kid a chance. He may never get again. You're six and six, so what? Well, I mean, really, when you get out of this, yeah, you get a ring for going to the bowl game. Everybody's happy, and they go through a week of all the celebrate. But really, and I don't mean this disrespectful to the bowl game, and I sure as hell don't mean it disrespectful to wanting to win or lose. You play, you want to win. But let, let, let's, let's get to real brass tacks here. What if O'Dowd, listen, you're going to fulfill a kid's dream that gets to do something he's probably, with five stars, he's never going to get a chance to start a game at LSU again, more than likely as a walk-on quarterback. He's been there to be a scout team guy and to run around, do whatever coach tells him. And God bless him, because I've seen those guys turn into something, whether it's a football player or great life guys, either, either way. But what, think about that if he goes out and has some fun and wins, what it's going to be like for the kid in the locker room afterwards. I mean, in his family. Garrett Nussmeyer is going to get plenty more chances to do this. So if he doesn't get a waiver, you don't he, he, and this red shirt, you sit him out. And you find a way to scramble around and you give O'Dowd three weeks, of work, a couple weeks of work, and you get him ready, and you go take care of your business. That's exactly what you do um, because it's your 6-6 six and six team. They, they, there's a lot that needs fixed. Brian Kelly will be watching. But if Brian Kelly and the group and Nussmeyer family didn't want a redshirt, they'd say, screw it, go play one game, and we'll come back with a, a one year less eligibility. Play the, so what? So you've got to play a, a, a walk-on. Uh, uh, Rick Neuheisel was – Rick Neuheisel? was a walk-on at UCLA and was a Rose Bowl MVP. Now, I know he was there all season. Let the kid play. So you kill two birds with one stone. You keep, save a red shirt, and you give a guy an opportunity in an SEC school, mm. in, in the, which will be after high school. This is the best, be the greatest day in his life when it comes to, to date. 
starting quarterback at LSU, and it may be forget. What if he goes out there, plays out of his mind, and say, <laughs> "Let's see what he's got in spring." Baker I Mayfield. Don't think you lose. I don't get that damn right. So <laughs> to me, as a matter of fact, I actually at this point I know what Nuss has, and he's going to be back. I think it would kind of be cool to see the kid. So if you don't get the red shirt uh, waiver, you sit out and you play the walk on and let him let it rip and make it simple for him, and let's go. Sold. Uh, Sean Salisbury, always a pleasure, man. We appreciate your time. Uh, one of the best parts of our week every week, man. We'll do it again next week. Thanks so much. You're awesome, brother. Thank you. You got me all fired up. You got me all fired up, dude. I want to go see Matto down to the Texas yeah. Bowl. Me and me. You and me. Let's go. He'll, he'll win the MVP. <laughs> and we'll say it's going to be a fun spring. There I'm go, coming bro. to Houston. You and me. We're going to sit at NRG together. We're going to slug beers. And we're going to watch Matt O'Dowd win the MVP in the have, Texas Bowl. You don't have to ask me twice. Things <laughs> things have happened, brother. I'm in. All I'll right. talk to you, man. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. I will be okay. in touch. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.